this bearing has been properly greased. In order for us to grease the bearings, we first have to properly clean the bearings and for that you're going to need this. Wow, you're good. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to show you, we're going to go over the uh, what's needed here and then we're going to step outside and show you in real time uh, due to the fact that there's a lot of noise on the shop. So, you're going to need um, a biodegradable uh, cleaner, food grade cleaner. You're going to need a brush. Uh, very important with a brush, make sure it's uh, the pl uh, plastic bristles because if you use the metal ones, once you start cleaning the bearing, it could potentially come loose and gets lodged in between the, uh, the ball bearing and it's going to cause uh, problems with it. So here's the bearing and I want to bring, uh, a pay close attention to this is the housing of the bearing. So why do we need to do this? It's very simple. That when you pack the grease in on the bearings the grease goes behind so you have to be able to remove that before you can repack the, the grease the new grease if you don't do that any grease that is in the back it's already dry grease pulverized I've seen pulverized grease uh, when you you try to clean it and what that does is as soon as the the unit heats up then that dry grease just dries the, the, the grease that you put on. So I had, a, I had an instance when uh, one of our clients said, well, I just greased it two weeks ago, but it was making that squeaking noise. So if you hear your, your unit making this loud, obnoxious sound, squeaking, nine times out of 10 is you gotta, you gotta do this, uh, clean the, bear, the bearing. By the way, this is the front bearing, Ken. The, uh, uh, for the uh, P series uh, two, the front bearing has to be clean. The rear bearing on the drum driver P series two is a sealed bearing that carries dried grease, so there's no need to do anything there. However, the P series, uh, the P12 one series one, you do have to do. Uh, remove the remove the motor, remove the cover from the back. Those guys that uh, our clients that have the the series one know what I'm talking about. Once you remove that, the process will be the same, which is you know we're gonna you're gonna see how we're gonna do it out there. Uh, then for the for the for the front part, there's a cover that goes here. So it's always a good idea to put silicone food ba uh, food grade silicone around before putting that cover. I'm showing this here because of the noise out there. But we're gonna li demonstrate demonstrate live how it's done. You also need, uh, well this is a wood chisel, but I, you can use a, a paint scraper because that cover that I'm talking about that goes on here tends to seize up with heat. So you gotta give it a light tap for it to come loose. And then you have to get uh, grease to repack it and it's uh, food grade. Food, uh, food grade, high temp food grade grease, and you should be good to go. Also, you're gonna need, I believe, a number one, a number four Allen key to loosen the, uh, the screws on the, on the cap. So once, once you do all that, then you, we are ready to, to clean the, the front bearing. So um, uh, come on, let's, uh, let's go back. There. One quick question yes. before we go out there. Since the bearing in the back is dry grease, is it normal to hear a little bit of sound from that rear bearing? That's a very good question. Yes. You, you, I've gotten calls, you might get some calls there that says, hey, there's a squeaking in the back. If you know for sure that it's a Series 2 and there's a squeaking, it's more like a sand rubbing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in the back. It's perfectly fine. Uh, it's a, it's a SK, uh, SKF bearing. It's a seal bearing and it's packed with dry grease. That's the behavior of dry grease, you know, but um, nothing wrong Nothing wrong with the bearing, no need to replace it. So we're just gonna concentrate on the front bearing today. Yes, for the Series 2, Series 1, you can do the front and the back, the, the, uh, the process is the same. So how often, I also get this question, Ken, how often should I clean it? Well, it depends. I always, when I talk to somebody that is calling me, I always default to my 
younger days when I used to help my dad fix cars. So depending on you know, the usage you give your unit, you can get a, start writing SOPs, you know, uh, standard operating procedures and how often you should do that. Go by the manual, but if you see that you need it more, uh, more often, then start cutting down on, you know, maybe three months instead of six months, three months uh, and, and whatnot. So um, very good question, by the way. So um, why don't we go back there and, and show them live how we can do this. All right, let's go. First thing you want to do is take your tryer out and then this is the number four I was talking to you about. Right, I'm gonna take this off. And then as I take these off, sometimes the cover the cover will come out. It come up easy or not. But if it doesn't, that's why we needed this. So you put your wedges in between there and you hit it lightly maybe this one there so then you can move, move this aside out of the way now if you notice Ken at the shop because we we build the machines if you notice the grease looks very clean but that's not the case with a machine that's being used uh, at a facility so definitely dry grease behind there but we're gonna, we're gonna get that out and what you have to do is well not have to do what I found that works great is turning the drum only so we're gonna turn this drum it's gonna get a little loud but just follow you know follow my hands and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to clean so technically what we want to do is the drum spins right we squirt we scrub and this is why if you notice I have put down here a very nice matted uh, rags that we're not going to use because by the time I'm done it's going to be garbage to go straight in the garbage. So let's get the machine started and once it starts spinning you're going to see how the, the, uh, the grease comes out. So cleaner, brush and you squirt. Let me see if I can open this. You start squirting too much. There we go. You kind of want it like that. Right? Remember, this is good grease. We can say that. So you start scrubbing and spraying. Look at how the ball bearing starts to clear up. Okay. This is how you clean the bearing. Yeah, it definitely looks a lot cleaner. Don't it? So when you do this, you keep turning the drum and you keep cleaning. Right? Now, if you notice, it's not really falling out. There's a reason why the grease, this is new grease, right? But if this were old grease, this thing would be oozing out. So all we gotta do is keep spraying a little bit more. And keep scrubbing. This is coming out clean. I want to use this opportunity to say, when you do your unit, when you guys do your unit, this is going to be oozing like a cup of joe. But if you notice mine, because it's good grease, it comes out clear. Well, that's kind of what you want when you're cleaning yours, to see clear stuff coming out. That means your bearing is now clean. So let's continue. So when, when the bearing is finally clean, the ball, the ball bearing, you're going to be able to see the ball bearing. Right? And seeing as the, this is good grease, I'm going to repack it. So I turn it off. So by this time, you should be getting like clear solution coming out. That means it's clean. You stop. All right. Now, after you stop, you add it dry. Like so. And what I like to do is I grab a glove. 
you really don't need a glove. I just like to grab a glove. I won't get my hands on And you have to pack the grease in, not just blob it. You gotta grab it with your index finger and watch how I pack it in. You gotta like really work it in between the uh, ball bearings. If you get a lot of grease at the beginning, it's okay. Just make sure you pack it in. Remember, your bearing is... The grease in the bearing is all gone, the old, the old stuff. So now you're packing new stuff. Look at how I'm moving my fingers. I'm literally packing it in there. It's a good idea to wear a glove, right? So if you notice, I packed it, right? So now I'm yeah. going to turn the drum on again. And the grease is going to want to fall off. Little ball. So I'm going to use my finger and work it in. And once I do that, you're going to see how it's going to disappear. So let's do that. Here we go. Look at the little balls. So I just work it back in. Work it in, work it in, work it in. And by doing this, you're getting it all the way to the back, right? Right. That's right. Here. I'm working it all the way back inside. That I want to get all the grease that I took out, the old one. I want to replace it with new all the way in the back, so I don't have to do this every every month. Unless, of course, I'm using my unit as you know, first, second, and third shifter. And then I stop. I grab more grease and I do the process over again. I have discovered that you only need to do it maybe twice. And you turn it on again. See, you want to get all the new grease in the new Now, what I did here is also very important. Somebody says, hey, don't I want to pack grease in my cover? The answer is no. If you do that, when the machine heats up and you have your nice batch you just got out, it has a tendency of getting soft. It can even liquefy and it's going to fall on your fresh batch and you're going to end up throwing that batch away. So no. The answer is no. If you notice, I just pack it in real good and I take off the excess, right? This bearing has been properly greased. It had to be clean before re-greasing. Right, we got to you're just clean out all the dirty grease, yes. then repack with the new grease. Correct. So here's the stuff that I was telling you about. This is uh, food grade silicone. It's a product from Germany, so sometimes when we're out, it takes a long time. We do sell this. We sell the grease as well. Um, but I'm going to show you here. So what you want to do is you want to clean. You notice they had already added some to this cover. What does it do? Well, we're dealing with heat. So when this heats up, it tends to like lock up. Or seize up, whatever you want to, or, or you know, fuse together. So this product here eliminates that. So if you notice, you just gotta put a small, a very thin bead. You wanna hold that for me, Ken? Thank you. So we put a small bead. There we go. Small bead because. There's no need to put a lot. It's like you've got it completely around the whole yes. cover. Yes, I want to create a you know a, a seal because that helps also with the grease not getting through. All right. So let me uh, in my hand and then 
you could do, you could potentially just do this. If you want to, you know, use your own product, just make sure it's uh, uh, food grade and right. high temp. Those are two things in your roaster that you want to always consider: high temp and food grade. this off so I can hold my screws better. The other thing you want to do when you're tightening this and a lot of my clients are not aware of Try to try to tighten this cover, uh, you know, and, and across, you know, north, south, east, west, a little bit because you want this thing to seat properly in the bearing house. You don't want to just lock one side in because it's not a good idea. Right? So if you notice, half a turn here, half a turn here, half a turn here, and we can get there again. So thanks for showing us how to clean and repack the front bearing. Uh, if you like the video, please follow on Instagram and subscribe on YouTube. As always, if you have any ideas for future videos, please write them in the comments below. See you next time.